Mr. Jaffa has played a leading role in the fight for a just fishing policy in South Africa. Today he serves as co-chairperson of the World Forum of Fisher People, the world organization representing millions of fishers and fish workers from around uh, 40 different countries. Welcome to Denmark. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I, I, I'm honored. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. I'm, I think I shouldn't be worried that what I'm going to say is going to be very different from what previous speakers have said. And that's probably because I don't come from, from, uh, from a government or from a political party. But instead, I, 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 I represent the voice of small-scale fishers and small-scale fishing communities from across the world. Now, indeed, across the world includes Europe. Uh, WFFP have got uh, small-scale fisher organizations from, from within Europe as, as, part, as part of our, our members. And I'm also going to make no apology for being provocative uh, at one or two moments during the few minutes that I'm going to be here. I am, <clears throat> yeah, the EU is, is, the EU is reforming its fishery policy, and it is just not an important issue for the EU, but it is also important for small-scale fishers and fishers, indeed, the world over. But importantly, it is a moment that the EU Commission or Fishery Commission should look at both the fishery practice resulting from its policy as well as the political implications of such practices. Above all, it is a moment that must be seized for the great positive interventions that it can make. And to do this, the EU must show that it has the political will to help build a better world especially for fisher folk, and more especially small-scale fishers. It is significant to note that, the Europe, that Europe has more than 700 EU flag vessels operating outside of the EU, EU waters, and many, many more vessels operating under joint ventures or third country flags, especially in the waters of developing countries. The pressure for fish resources in the southern hemisphere or in developing parts of the world has led, and this is significantly important, it has led to the sidelining of marine conservation obligations in our areas. And when that happens, we are to blame. In many of our countries in the developing world, the democratic voice of fishers are unheard, and hence it is the political elite classes that take decisions on behalf of the people in most of our countries. So in essence, what we have is a deficit of true democratic practice. So when you are talking about reforming the fishery policy in, in, in Europe, there are essentially two small but key messages that I want to bring that needs to be taken into account. And my first message is, do not colonize the seas of the global south. Colonialism belongs in the past. The marine resources found in the waters of developing countries belong to the people of that country. Ma'am, there's no such thing as surplus stock. It is like telling us there's surplus air. Our marine resources are part of nature. It's a natural resource. The more we, want, the more we say there are surplus of it, the more we want to take out, the more we want to denude what is nature, the more we want to kill what is life. So there is no such thing. But I agree that our fishers and our people 
depend on marine life for food, for nutrition, and for an income. And if there were more stock or resources in a particular country and what that country has been able to harvest up until now, then it remains up to the fisher communities in those countries to explore ways of harvesting those resources according to the local conditions and the local needs in those countries. And this could be done in a manner that would facilitate their own development, their own growth, and in particular through deepening democratic and cultural practices in that country. Surplus stock is not just there for the taking. Partnership agreements and joint ventures only serve to support the agendas of the powerful political classes and not the poor people, especially not poor fishing communities. Sustainable fishery agreements is just another word for the same thing. There's no difference. It is another word for ITQs. And ITQs can be bought and sold by those who have power, in particular those who have power over marine natural resources. And it is a power that poor fishing communities do not have because we do not have the political power, nor do we have the financial power. That resides with the political classes, both in our countries and in countries within Europe and in North Americas. ITQs turn marine resources into private property. Marine resources belong to all the people in that country. It belong to the belongs to the people who interact with it. But by turning it into a private property, by turning it into an ITQ, you take the ownership of that resource away from those people. And those are the very people who, de who derive their basic livelihoods, their basic income from that resource. So by taking that to turning access to marine resources, access to the right to fish, by privatizing it, by turning it into a private commodity, you dispossess those fishing communities who, do, who rely on the resource. South Africa is a key example where that has happened. In 2005, South Africa introduced a new uh, fishery management system. The system was based on the ITQ system across all fisheries. Every fishing right was based. You had to apply for a quota. As a result of that system, of that ITQ system that was applied then, a total of 30,000 small-scale fishers lost their income because they could not qualify successfully for an ITQ. But what did happen is 10 big commercial companies owns 80% of the fishery today. But 30,000 people whose livelihood is dependent on it lost out on the ITQ or, on the, or lost out on successfully obtaining a quota. So their livelihoods as at stake. Now that same principle, that same ITQ system applies, it's the effect of the ITQ system in South Africa applies across the board in all parts of the developing world, not just South Africa. And I'm sure, and I've heard our fishers, our small-scale fishers in Europe say to us exactly the same thing, that the way the ITQ is being applied here also dispossesses them of their livelihoods. 